doesn't use the phone anymore. We were talking about this in, in the hall. I think the, the, abstract, the very specific construct you got there, the abstract construct, which applies whether it's consumer facing, business facing, whatever industry, and then frankly, however your brain works, is that we're now in a place where a bunch of the constraints have shifted. And we're probably in an era, if you want to link it back to your financial stuff, you know, the financial dynamics have changed. We're probably in an era in the next decade where there's a lot of foundational shift. I think, I think Stowe talked about it really well yesterday in terms of uh, his presentation. And I think the neat thing about us is we're all enablers of this, both in terms of the technology as well as the use case. I think one of the big, one of the big opportunities for everybody that's stuck in a use case that doesn't work for them is to do what Fred did and say, I'm gonna change my use case. This doesn't work for me, I'm gonna approach it differently and see how that works. And the more the tools will adopt to that, the easier it's gonna be to do that sort of thing. Yeah, and I, I would say, because someone who just, you know, again, I'm starting this business in, oh, through a lucky investment, but really started in 05. And nobody knew who you were in 05, and nobody knows who you are in episode so. Yeah, I mean, it's not about who knows, it's about, it's, but it's about the, the fact that we can all sit here and be friends without really knowing each other that well. And I think, you know, that's the hidden power. And I don't think you can really put your finger on it. But at the same time, we all want to tap it because when you meet Fred for the first time, you want to do it. Whereas I, but I would disagree with Fred saying, as an entrepreneur, you have to tactically use all those things. Meaning, I can, and Fred has picked up the phone for me, meaning I don't abuse it as a, as a, as a weapon. Uh, you know, golfers say, oh, where's your weapons? You know, everybody has, you know, so I call my things, you know, lay down your weapons if you're, if you're at lunch. You put down your phone and you put down your things. Or, you know, the new thing is, you know, you, someone said to me, I'm just going to go retro on you and give you cardboard. So, like, it's just a way, it's just one of many things. Fred, Fred tells you how he wants to be contacted, but that doesn't mean once you've, once you've gone through the process that you won't pick up your phone. I mean, you don't like using it, but you picked up the phone. You called me this morning. You didn't pick it up, but I knew you were looking No, no, at I it. did pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember? No, I am. He called call. me this morning for breakfast, and I answered the phone, and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was somebody else. <laughs> well, I have a sleeping problem, so sometimes I do call without remembering why. So, uh, That's your question. Sorry, I interrupted your flow. Okay, I don't remember. You're clearly voice. not the guy that starts at the beginning of your inbox and goes to the end. Right? I am truly a problem child of this industry because I am an entrepreneur and, like you, like I'm an entrepreneur and I run a business. Well, we all run businesses. You run fun. And but I'm also now running a business, and I am overwhelmed with which ones are most important. Like, do you know, as, a, as, a, as an angel investor. What's the proper way to, to reach out to people? I love my blog, I also love to tweet, and then I think email is important too. And I think it's just because I came into the tech industry so, or web industry so late, you know, because I came from the financial industry. So I, I do do everything with a financial analogy. And so Umar Heck, I don't know how to pronounce his name, had, I, had a really interesting, Heck. So his piece yesterday was really interesting because listen, we're all in the social web on this stage and we all believe in it and we know that, you know, when I started Wall Strip, I was like, who cares about advertising? Google or Yahoo is gonna figure out web video advertising for me and then I'll worry about that later. You know, flash forward to 2010 basically, no one's kind of figured it out well or innovative and, and Umar calls it innovative. So he's talking yesterday, and you know, I guess he has a financial way of looking at things too, and he was saying we're headed for some kind of crash, maybe just a short-term crash, because of the lack of innovation and in advertising on the web. And you know, the amount, and so is there any comment on that? Or like, where do you see, you're not scared. I, I know that this room isn't scared. I'm scared, uh, because I'm in this space, and I would have expected better solutions to have come up now to monetize things like Facebook, and Twitter, uh, and how patient are we supposed to be? And what, what are the problems? Sorry, not really a question, but what do you see there, Brad? I didn't read the I didn't read the article uh, because uh, you didn't email it to me to read. Sorry, but well, I didn't know I was doing this. <laughs> but but I, I'm. <laughs> I, so, I, so I'm going to take the premise. I, so if it's, I'm going to take the premise as interpreted that there's there's no innovation in advertising, and that somehow sort of the social media monetization dynamics aren't working. And I just call yeah. bullshit on both of those. I don't, I don't get that. I don't know what that means. 
Pardon? He said that the advertising stuff in social networks is toxic, like the way um, junk bombs are like... like Nobody's taking bombs. responsibility for these ads, and they're just being parceled out like we did with loans. And, you know, Facebook says they can't control what comes... So, the, the, it's a, in a way, it's interesting because he's saying Facebook just says, well, we can't police everything. Nice, nice inflammatory uh, uh, analogy. I don't even know what that means, that it's being parceled out, like, say it again. Like junk so, you're saying the supply chain of the ads is such that you can't work out who's doing what because... Um, the, like, Farmville is putting the ads to offer power, which is putting them through six chains of, of other people that ends up with being something that scams you into a mobile phone. Well, the, my reaction to that is that if that's what he's saying, that he just simply doesn't understand how it works. Okay. So, but, so, how, so where do you see, is this the next I, wave that we have right now? Is this what it's going to look like? Like what, the way Zynga's making money on faith, the way Playdom and all those companies. They don't make money with advertising. I mean, let me just call bullshit on that, okay? These companies don't make money on advertising. They do a little bit of advertising, and I think in a year they'll do no advertising because it's not the best way to monetize those games. Where they make all their money is in virtual goods, powering up in the game. And nobody's focused on that. They're focused on fucking 5 or 10% of the business instead of 90% of the business. If they'd spend the time thinking about where they're really making the money, there'd be a great aha moment and we'd see a lot of people focused on building what are great revenue models. Instead, people are focused on this stupid shit which isn't going to even be part of the business anymore. It's, it's, it's the same conversation cycle, I think, actually, that was going on two months ago, minus two years, which is how Twitter going to make money. And, you know, in, in 24 hours, I, I'm not privy to the numbers, but in 24 hours, it's pretty unambiguous that Twitter makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's sort of this dynamic of the, it's, it's, it's the same echo chamber phenomenon, which is sort of at a high level, things start to move around, and people build on top of misinformation, mm -hmm. and then extrapolate from misinformation. So to some degree, the, what was the analogy? The, it was a mortgage-backed problem in this chain. In some way, you're having the same phenomena in the information chain, and one of the interesting one of the interesting opportunities is it's very hard to cut through that because once it starts to vibrate, vibrate around, everybody revibrates it um, using these tools. Sure, and, that, and that's what surfaces, and then that becomes fact because you know I, I I've learned an interesting thing over the last couple of years. I'm not a journalist; I'm a blogger, so journalistic standards don't apply to me. And so anybody who's a blogger and not a journalist doesn't have to subscribe to journalistic standards. So anybody who writes a blog can simply assert whatever they want as fact. However, people treat a lot of that information as fact and subsequently build on it as fact as though it was journalism. That's an interesting phenomenon. I don't think it's good or bad. It's just interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that you then have to sort of take the derivative of this when you're actually doing critical analysis about how does this really work? What's the real business? Where's the real innovation? What's really going to but no, I but I, I think, listen, you won't take my call later, and we've, we've, we've confirmed that. I, I've always been. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not, I'm not no, upset I with you. I'm not. just upset I, with, I, with... That's why I wanted to do it. So, so here's the question. So the, the question is, it still is 5 or 10%. Yes, but the important thing is, where's 90 to 95%? 90 Let's to 95% Let's, is Nobody's really okay. explaining it. Okay, I'll tell you what. There were 853,000 tractors sold in this country last year. Okay? You know, how many, you know how many tractors were bought in Farmville in one day? More than that, okay? And, and then why are people buying tractors? So they can farm their farm more quickly, so that they can power up in the game, so that, they, so that I can beat him, okay? I want to beat him. Why aren't you answering my call? This is entertainment. <laughs> this is I forwarded my number to Fred for them. This is entertainment value. I'm spending the money buying a tractor so I can beat him in Farmville instead of going to see the movie. I mean, that's how people are making money in these games. That's, that's why EA bought Playfish. That's why Playdom got financed at some amazing valuation. And that's the way people are making money in the system. And if we take that insight and we start applying it to social media, I think we're going to start to see some really interesting monetization models develop outside of social gaming. 